Okay, hi, hello, welcome to the Friendship Project. It's my, yeah, it's, I feel like it's very much a sisterhood, I would say. We've known each other for like half of our lives at this point, basically. You know like when you meet someone and you know like what you see is a vibe? Yeah. But like in the best way. Yeah. A lot of things that we like put in our internal monologue, like most likely this person has done this exact same thing. So this is a project that I'm working on currently in my singer seminar. In this project, I wanted to tackle exactly what friendship was and what it meant to me. For some context, the singer seminar um, that this project is for tackles the topic of literary friendships. That involves authors and also characters within stories. Authors being black authors in the 20th century, including James Baldwin and Lorraine Hansberry, uh, Toni Morrison and Maya Angelou, but Langston Hughes and Zora Neale Hurston, um, and even Audre Lorde and Pat Parker. And we're exploring the expanse of these friendships. Um, and something about these friendships I found very fascinating, as opposed to deaths in which they seem to be demonstrated in written word. That's a concept that's like relatively new to me because I am Gen Z, we live in the digital age. The evidence that we have of their friendships is through letters and like documentations and works that include thoughts that the other person within that relationship thought of. And it just seems so deep and profound. And so like, in a sense, I want to compare, or at least think of my friendships in context with uh, the friendships that we've tackled in this class. A lot of those friendships, granted, um, we're bound together because of the shared experience of being a black writer creative within a time in which uh, I guess like the black literary canon was still being developed in America and therefore like those bounds of being one of the few people that stood out within that field um, that bound a lot of them together and it's very definitely prevalent within those pieces obviously like each relationship is slightly different I mean are all not just born by that one thing but it made me wonder okay what were the bonds what were the foundations of my own relationships and so i decided to think of my relationships from high school to college and seeing what they're made of like how they're brought together and i said high school through college because i would say those were my most formative years in terms of identity um that's not to say that my identity will not continue to change as um my life continues because i think like you don't stop changing until you die so like having the audacity to be like yes and this is my final form like some random dragon ball z or anime character that doesn't make any sense so i just want to take into account like the formative years that basically made me into a more assured person not entirely assured but a more assured person than i am now and what those relationships look like so yeah i'm analyzing my friendships through the lens of the friendships born through struggles born through art in the 20th century and seeing how they compare and seeing these similar things that binded us together with these interviews on friendship i decided that i would do three because three is a powerful number three relationships that span from high school to college yeah but without further ado let's hop into ground zero the first interview and that first interview was done with my high school friend who i didn't exactly meet in high school but we go into depth in that later so without further ado let's hop into the first interview <laughs> Okay, hello, it's Lauren, as you know, because we're in class, and this is... I'm Stella. This is Stella, and we're going to talk about our friendship. So, first question, how did we meet? We were literally just talking about this, right, but we, we were, were aware of each other's existence in middle school. We went to the same high school. Um, yeah. And yeah, I don't, we didn't have any classes together or anything. No. I think we just think, hold up. hung around the same people. My first memory of us like actually like talking for real for real was like the first day of school. I think we were both late or something. And I was like, Law was going to my first class. And I was like, oh, I know you, your face. And it was like kind of awkward, but like, I was like, all right, I know you. Like we vibed. We was both like awkwardly waiting for someone to lead us to class. Yeah. And then someone awkwardly led me to class. I was wearing bangles that day. That's why I remember. Next question is like, would you define our friendship as more of like a sisterhood? or like a collaboration and like why 
You can what do you mean by it. collaboration? I then proceeded to explain everything I already explained earlier on in this video. <laughs> So like, would you say like we're more of a collaborative kind of friendship where it's like we are brothers or sisters in arms? Or would you say that it is something that's, I don't know, something, something else? Thoughts. I would say it's deeper than a collaboration because I don't just view view you as I think what you were talking about with Langston Hughes it was kind of like an artistic partnership right and I don't view our friendship like that I think we've been through enough <laughs> we've been through enough <laughs> where yeah. it's more than oh you're someone that I can bounce I, like you know creative ideas off of I feel like it's more than that and right. you're gonna hate that I say this but oh. there's some times where I see you I'm like you're, you just feel like a little sister to me yeah. where it's like you were mind me your energy feels oh very much like my little sister but i don't know if that we're equals obviously but right, it's like right. sometimes you have that like energy that i'm like I that's my little understand. sis you know what i mean but <laughs> that's a surprise to me <laughs> we're obviously equals but it's like i don't feel like i'm like your big sister it's like you have that energy that it's like yeah like that's my yeah it's, i feel like it's very much a sisterhood i would say ah uh, i would say the same we've known each other for like half of our lives at this point basically because, like, when I was in middle school, I was, like, 10. And I'm almost 21. Mm -hmm. So, like, I've known of you for, like, three years before we became friends in our freshman year of high school. Yeah. And, like, we've been officially friends for about, like, seven years about. Mm -hmm. Eight years when we graduated, I suppose. And yeah. it's, like, I feel like when it comes to, like, sisterhood or, like, siblinghood ship or, like, skinship in that kind of way, you can be there for someone that you've known for a while. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, you've not exactly have been friends, but you can be there for them in that way. I suppose, like, us being in the hallway. I mean, you thought I hated you. But... <laughs> In middle school, yes. In middle school, <laughs> I thought you like didn't like me, but that was not really based on anything because we didn't really talk. We didn't really talk. Yeah, it was just like yeah. perception. I was honestly an, a slightly angry child um, in middle school and like earlier years of high school. <laughs> I've grown out of it a bit. Like, I got more levity now. But, you know, like, we all go through that angsty teen phase. And so, that was, like, around that time, which might have been why you thought I hate Maybe. You. I also think something Yo. with sisterhood, I will say, is that it's, like, you can be away from that person and then just come back and, like, connect. Right. And I think we definitely have that. I think it's, like, sometimes when you have that, like, friendship where it's, like, you don't have to see that person every day. But, like, when you link, you link, you know? Mm -hmm. So, that's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah, because damn well, I do not be responding to that group chat. <laughs> I do not, for context. We are in the same friend group. Group. so it's like we've all like are in a group chat together and like they text a lot in it and i do not but we still vibe when we meet in person so there is that and i guess another thing when it comes to sisterhood i would say is that like we go in and out of like liking each other or, like being close or like talking to each other a lot and then not talking to each other like like you said yes. and i think like that's why i define it as sibling shit because it's like i've been aware of you for so long that it feels like that yeah even if like we weren't friends the entire time we've known each mm -hmm. other so would you say that our political and cultural views align and like how the immediate yes <laughs> i would hope so i mean i also think we grew up in a place that was very kind of a bubble we're both from dc and i think that in dc there's just like a lot of democrats like i think there's that's like kind of what you're surrounded with mm. i think that's how we grew up like in our families and i think right. that's what we were surrounded with so i feel like that's just what we know but i also feel like as we've grown and like you know been educated on things i think we've still held those ideas and just expanded on those ideas right that's actually very true i think like sometimes you grow up in like ideas can distance like me and my brother i think our political ideas are slightly different now because he mm -hmm. went to school in the south y'all oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i guess something that might have helped with us keeping the same political views is that we both go to school in new york that's true. like granted mine is manhattan yours is like bronxville yeah but still like that kind of helps maintain similar political views i would say mm -hmm. like we both remain in the east coast and we've been through similar things and like i don't know i guess like the things we consume are also pretty similar i would say yeah. we were talking the other day about like youtube videos that we watch and we both have like i'm not gonna go into the details because that's kind of wild for the <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it's like similar ish people that we watch mm -hmm. and and we definitely have a few like youtubers that we watch similarly so it kind of helps the content we consume and like the stories we consume are somewhat similar and therefore like that probably helps maintain that I would right agree. right and then i think like life experiences also just play into that and i think we like have similarities enough where it's like obviously we're both black women so that like definitely plays a role but i think like oh yeah for sure right like life experiences that are more like nuanced than that as well i think we have that are shared so i think that that also plays a role we both also have pretty similar i don't know if you can see 
but I think you're like a four. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna speak in terms that I may not define define under the screen. But I'm like four C hair, because you know we Nigerian out here. We got that four C hair. You are like four A. B? Or maybe like four B. B. Four B. Yeah. So it's like over the summer, even I would be like Stella, what hair gel do you use? <laughs> Like there's some like she put me on to wearing docks too sugar docks bro. Oh my god, I don't want to flash it anymore. Like yeah. <laughs> So we're both wearing docks. I'm not sure if I'd say our styles are similar, but they're like adjacent ish. Mm-hmm. I think sure. you're a bit more grungy than I am. Sure. Really? That's interesting. Re- would you say I'm more grungy? I would say Neither so. of us. Yeah, I would say you have more of like an edge to your look. I'll take it. Yeah. Period. Received. I think I can be a little not preppy, but maybe more reserved sometimes but i think you have more of an edge to your yeah but i think that's just because your personality yeah and like my personal it's a personality difference like same 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 words different font (laughs) 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 how do you how do i show my friendship to you one of the things that i really appreciate in a friend is like honesty and loyalty i think that you're very loyal Mm -hmm. um I think that, like, I have personally an issue with people that are, like, more shallow or fake. Uh, And I feel like you being, you always show up, I think, authentically. Like, you're very direct and honest. You know, even if there's, like, a situation where it's, like, you're tired or you're just not feeling it. I think even just expressing that is, like, a great way to, like, know so let someone know where you're at. And they're, like, oh, okay, Mm -hmm. I get it. Like, you're not just, like, kind of reacting out of nowhere. And so I think that's allowed me to also kind of just understand you more because i always kind of understand where you're at and then you allow people to be honest with you too like you you're very like receptive to honesty um which is good because it just allows people to be themselves around you so i would say that's like the first thing that comes to mind Ah, i would actually i i would agree with that (laughs) but i think like i don't even know i feel like in high school half of it i showed my honesty in a different way like Mm. i would be honest about certain things but would never be fully like vulnerably honest Mm. I think that vulnerability I learned being friends with like you and like the rest of our friend group and that's why I can like more like easily express my emotions I think that's something I learned in college um because of the pandemic I think we're forced to be more honest there's no hiding emotions Emotions came came out out. (laughs) ironically we was just bro we had a whole phone call (laughs) we was just like crying on the phone oh celebration (gasps) oh what's going on that might be a wedding I'm gonna keep that in the shot but there have been times I guess where like I definitely emotionally grew and that definitely happened while I was friends with like Stella, Stella and Co. So that was, that was cool. Stella and Co. That's what we call in the squad. (laughs) Also, I never thought of it that way. To my surprise, I actually was surprised by a lot of what we talked about during this interview. (laughs) But like what draws me to your friendship is I think you usually like, sometimes to your detriment, I feel like this is a plus and a minus for you. Yeah. But like not for me, like a minus for yourself is in your own Uh well-being. Is that you tend to like make space for people and you're like very conscientious of people. I try. And like a way that's like, it's nice and reassuring Mm because I feel like I can usually say things to you and at least try and hear where I come from. She's honestly better at it than me because me and like (laughs) another friend in our group, Washington, like we can be honest to a fault sometimes. (laughs) And Selma at least, like she's kind of like a mom in a sense where like she'll at least be like, even if we wrong, she's like, ah. She's like, oh, you're heard, bro. <laughs> I try. I try to yeah. see what is, especially with my friends, because it's like, I know you guys are good people. Like, I'm cool with you guys. I trust you guys that I, like, try and see where you're coming from. Exactly. I say a minus. That's a potentially a minus because I think she can afford to be more honest about <laughs> shit sometimes. But I think that's just my personality coming through. I, I think that's a wrap. But I appreciate it, bro. Thanks of for coming course. on the show. Thank you. Yeah. I loved being here. Right? What's up? What's up? So, after that interview, I discovered some new things. I didn't really know what I was expecting going into these interviews, but I was a bit surprised by some of the things that were brought up because I never, like, when it comes to friendship, sometimes, like, they just happen. You don't think too in depth about them. But this project I learned after starting it would cause me to think a little bit more about uh, what prompts my relationships, everything like that. And the interesting thing with me and Stella is the fact that we have a lot of shared experiences, which make me trust her more deeply. Like something about me, even in high school, it was hard for me to exactly call someone a friend full heartedly, even if they might have called me friend. And it's not because I disliked a person. It's just because I guess it's hard for me to trust people. And because I'm kind of a romantic, I guess you can say, I love books and I love the great spans of friendship. As a high schooler that's just growing up in like 
like the 21st century. You don't necessarily have like the great epic relationships that you see in your books. And therefore like, I don't even know, like there was a bit of a disconnect between like what a realistic friendship looked like and what actually exists in my day to day life. But yeah, in, th in that interview, I was surprised by the fact that she called me <laughs> a little sister. Um, I never thought of our relationship that way, but it does somehow fit because I am a bit high energy and maybe a bit prone to being impulsive or hard-headed. And Stella's kind of my opposite in that way because she's not necessarily impulsive. She's incredibly conscientious. And I guess like she takes that into account whenever she interacts with me, which is nothing I really thought of before. But aside from that, we really do have a lot of shared experiences. We were both in like similar clubs. We spent a lot of time together in and out of school. We live in the same neighborhood. There's just a lot of things that like bounded us together and I guess gradually but especially post high school it was easier for me to open up to her because of our proximity because of the longevity of our relationship and I think that's obviously just one of the simple things that bind people together if I were to connect it to any relationship from my singer seminar I would closely relate it to Sula and Nell from Sula by Toni Morrison and then also a mix between James Baldwin and Audrey Lord and Pat Parker I would say we're similar in the fact that we're both black girls Girls. We both grew up um, and came to age in the same neighborhood and also like we just have both been bonded by a lot of experiences um, both because of the color of our skin and more nuanced things and yeah that that definitely is for sure one of the strong things that bound our relationship into a sort of sisterhood and that's definitely the relationship that Sula and Nell have within that book. Another thing that definitely binds our friendship together is the fact that we're able to talk so freely and we're able to talk so freely because of that long knowledge. Um, that's definitely something that James Baldwin and Lorraine Hansberry said because he called them siblings essentially um, without that bub connection because they're formed by the chains of struggle and while me and Stella like we've known each other for long enough that we've seen each other struggle and seen each other through like some of the hardest points in our lives so I would definitely say our relationship is a sisterhood um, that developed because of that longevity and because of the fact that we've stuck with each other through some of the hardest points in our life so yeah that's definitely one of them and then finally Audrey Lord and Pat Parker I only say that because obviously Obviously, we are college students. We're both from DC, but we go to school and we come back and we see each other physically after a long period of time. And therefore, as a result of that, um, I, it, it kind of has a relationship where it's like, okay, I'm like Pat Parker in a sense where I don't respond immediately in the group chat. I mentioned that before. And Stella's out to learn a sense where sometimes she'll reach out and be like, yo, she like consistently responds. And that's something I admire greatly about her. And something I probably want to change a bit about myself because the older I get, the harder it will be to maintain relationships. And I think like responding to text and initiating conversations is definitely a key way of handling that. I'll get better with that, I promise. That's a promise to my future self. But yeah, um, that's definitely something that holds our relationship together. And I think that's an apt way of describing it. So longevity of time, connection through struggle, even if it's not necessarily through art, but through shared experience. Um, that's definitely something that ties the two of us together and something I'm grateful for. Um, yeah, never really held it in context before that. The next interview is one with a relationship I ended up forming in my sophomore year. Spring 2022 is when this friendship came into being. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this one, but let's just hop right into the interview. you from the stern building yeah. stern tish hall uh i've not been in this dusty building since my sophomore year so but <laughs> joining me is my friend esmeralda say hi esmeralda hi guys nice to meet you right how did we meet um oh my god why did i forget okay no sorry i know, <laughs> I know <where laughs> don't. we met sophomore year in our liberal studies class mm -hmm. we were i think it was arts and cultures modernity you remember the class name i think i do I'm, I'm, you, I'm with you like that. I'm with you like that. <laughs> she was sitting in the front row and I was sitting in the back row. And then we had to do like a little group discussion. And somehow we got into the same group. 
and Lauren was yeah. like, "Wait, like, why does Esmeralda Logi got some valid points?" And I was like, "Wait, no, for real." And let me let me explain something to the people, right? I like low key internally. I'm low key an asshole to a certain extent in the fact, not like an asshole in general, <laughs> but in the fact that like I feel like a lot of things that people say sometimes I can personally disagree. But I feel like some of the stuff Esmeralda was saying, I was like, "Wait, she kind of spinning." I don't know. I was like, "Hold on." I was, yeah. I was like, "Let her cook, bro." Like I was. <laughs> so after that, even though I was sitting in the front row, like I decided to talk to homegirl after class. And she got me to change the front row, bro. Bro, because she was sitting in the back with a hoodie up. Like, that didn't make any sense to me. I was like, you this smart. You're sitting in the back. Mind you, by the end of the semester, like, she was, like, the one person in class that consistently kept up the readings, like, the movies and stuff. So our teacher really liked her. Yeah, <laughs> so it made really sense. Good. It made sense for her to, like, be in the front row. It did. Like, you was holding back your potential sitting in the back row. That shit was crazy. <laughs> to my real potential, guys. <laughs> That's how we first met. How do our political or cultural views align? Bruh, they're very aligned. They yeah. actually <laughs> are very aligned. <laughs> I feel like cultural-wise, we both come from, like, immigrant families. Yeah. So it's like, that, that definitely helps. No, yeah. We definitely judge the same shit. We, yeah. <laughs> the way we will see something and give each other the look and just instantly know, like, what like, the fuck is up. I feel like social cues. <laughs> we actually do have a lot of similar <laughs> thoughts. Like, every meanest thought I've had, I'm like, Esmeralda's probably going like, to think the exact same thing. <laughs> People. We're actually very nice people, by the way. I'm giving the wrong impression. We are very nice people, but like a lot of things that we like put in our internal monologue, most likely this person has thought this exact same thing. We it's just like slight judgment. It, you know? We own up to we it. We own up to it. We're not we're, lying and faking. You're one of the few people I could talk shit to. Because <laughs> someone else be like, Lauren, you gotta no, be nice to the people. I'm like real, but. Cancel However, culture. That's cancel culture. Like, fuck cancel culture. I'm like, hello? Like, I can say some shit is whack, and it's actually whack, bro. That doesn't make me a mean person. It's just, yeah. it's just whack. It's your opinion. Respectfully. Exactly. In case it wasn't obvious, a lot of our conversations end up devolving into something like this. Just lots of nonsensical laughter. One thing I will say, though, I feel like people are, like, think everyone on the internet is their fucking friend. And they are not your friend. Not your friend. Like, when you have, like, certain thoughts, like, sometimes it's cool to just keep it in your inner circle, bro. <laughs> this one of my inner circles. Like, yeah. hello? Hello. So it's like, I'm gonna be honest with Esmeralda if nobody else. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna be like, girl, that shit was whack. <laughs> like, what the fuck did we just watch, bro? <laughs> Like, yes. I feel like culturally, social wise, like we both come from immigrant households, yeah. which probably like shapes our humor and judgments <laughs> somewhat. Happy. Like we, we do be judging people like that. And um, socially, I guess like also pretty similar. We speak pretty similar. We I feel do. like we say bro a lot. <laughs> we do. We yeah. Do I mean, similar mannerisms, you know, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Politically, I don't know. I feel like we don't more, talk about politics yeah. more. I feel like whenever we talk about politics, it's because I initiate the conversation, but it's like. You're more know, politically knowledgeable than me. Yeah. I don't really know about politics. But it's like cool because we talk about like pop culture shit. Yeah. Like we'll be like, you see that watch it on Twitter the other day? Mm. That kind of. Dim- <laughs> you see what Ice Spice was doing? And, oh, I guess this is another thing. In terms of sexuality, are we aligned? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> I mean to say, I identify as pan and Esmeralda oh, identifies as... As straight. Esmeralda, an ally, bro. Oh. Ally. <laughs> uh, but we, we, we still fuck with each other. I yeah. like her stories, though. She got some yeah. good dating you actually, stories. You actually, you're one of the... She's one of the few straight friends I have, now that I think about it. Really? Yeah, because like my friends back home, they're all like at least like somewhat sexually like ambiguous in some way like they're either pan or bi or like i even know like maybe just non-binary like shit like that in terms of straight friends i feel like you and elise are like what the few ones i have the only two bro <laughs> the only two. would you define our friendship as like a sisterhood or collaboration no sisterhood bro what sisterhood, yeah we did not do any work in that class <laughs> <laughs> you can't say we yeah. came together because we worked on that class. No. Like, we did not, girl. I'm a good student, but like occasionally, especially in my sophomore year, I was a bad student. But occasionally. You, you remember the group project we had for that class? Bro, we was tied together by this really, bro, there was this one girl. I was going to say another word, but we trying to keep it polite and cute because this is a podcast episode. There was this one girl, bro, we had to do a group project with. No, that shit was so fucking bad. So we were tied by trauma from that one. We were tied by trauma from that one incident. That's yes. Yeah. And then we continued on. Honestly, I feel like Esmeralda's looking an older sister vibes for real. Because, like, here's the thing. When I, like, make homies in class, I'm a very, like, 
bad person when it comes to texting and like keeping in touch therefore if it was solely based on me in order to sustain a friendship it might not have lasted because my ass is so bad when it comes to replying I feel like you're not that bad though. okay replying yes but like you yes. can initiate oh yeah yeah i initiate like, stuff in she, she likes movie days so i'm like okay like she'll initiate yeah exactly see esmeralda started movie days between us because yeah. we we're like what was it i stayed abroad and i was like bro like let's let's talk over the summer like what happened what occurred we didn't do it while i was abroad because it was like time yeah. difference bleh, but we did like start watching like K dramas and shit and like very terrible romance movies. Mm, yeah. You sat through a lot of my freaking TV rants. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> but for Wednesday, it was so funny. We had to pause. Like, I forgot we watched Wednesday. Okay, we watched a lot of like new yeah. shows together. We so did, that's cool. Did. I feel like I can't watch a show with just anybody, probably. Especially, I think we think similarly when it comes to a show. Yeah, we do. So it's like, we if I watch a show with someone that's like, doesn't feel the same way it'd be like oh this is key awkward like we can't really talk but we talk we talk, we talk. again because we judge things so <laughs> i don't know what the basis of that is but we do oh yeah how do i show my friendship for you communication is a big thing between us like even mm -hmm. if we don't text like often once we do like bro our fucking facetimes are like three fucking hours bro, they mean that long <laughs> over the summer we'd have literally have work in the morning and we'd be talking for like way too long yeah. one thing i can say about our friendship i feel like we're good at listening to each other mm. when we have stories to say we're like good listeners to each other like we're mm. very like interactive in the conversation like very if she niche. says something i'll be like no and she'll yeah, exactly. be like the same way very <laughs> animated when we talk <laughs> We actually do have very similar energies. It's probably why. <laughs> but it's weird because whenever you pull up to class, you're like, no, hood up, like hiding and shit. Like, I don't know. As a student, about. I don't like talking to people. But as a person, I'm fun. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Our, our relationship is also a lot of bonding time. Oh, yeah. Like, we like going out. We like we doing do like stuff. We like going out. I feel like I we're both quality time people. Yeah, we've been to a couple of fun yeah. functions together. Mm -hmm. yeah, no. I tend not to party with people, but if I am partying with someone, it's going to be this child over here. Because what? I think we good. All right. Thank you, Esmeralda, for showing on the pod. Thank you, guys. Got any last words? Keep it pushing, guys. Keep it pushing. <laughs> <laughs> no you heard it from here, bro. <laughs> this next week is going to be trash. <laughs> no, it's literally so the interesting thing about this interview is that again this is another interview i didn't really know what to expect because i never really thought in depth about my relationships but <laughs> this interview was really funny because i think this is probably the interview i laughed the most in um and i find that really freaking hilarious and i think that really defines a relationship because we're the kind of people where it's like we didn't know each other for that long but like two years strong i feel like we can still kind of communicate telepathically we can read each other's minds um and yeah we just like think in a similar way i would definitely say like esmeralda like without her our relationship would not have stood strong against the trials of time because honestly i did meet her during some of rougher moments i've had in college um although we were friends i still was stuck in this kind of insecure mindset of because we're friends in class doesn't necessarily mean we're friends outside of class she helped make our friendship last outside of class and i'm really grateful to her for that because now she's one of the strongest friendships that i have in college i don't even know if i were to describe our relationship in the context of my senior seminar what would i say what would i say our friendship is probably like most similar to like audrey lord and pat parker <laughs> And I say that if only because we share some similar humor. And if you read um, the letters in Sister Love between Audrey and Pat Parker, you'll see that they share some like sarcastic quips, like some dry humor. And I think our relationship is definitely formed on having a similar sense of humor. So I would say that. I Again, I'm not like the best communicator um, through text, through call. Um, but Esmeralda is someone who always reach, reaches out, which makes me feel not as tense about reaching out to her. It's a simple thing, but like when it comes to like reaching out to people, it makes you know that they're thinking of you and that brings a bit of comfort and makes you feel more at ease whenever you hang out. I don't know, like whenever I hung out with Esmeralda, she never made me feel as if like any thoughts I had were weird or <laughs> even if we disagree with each other, I felt like it's she was one of the people who's way easier sometimes to just like be myself and say like the weirdest things that come to mind she won't judge me she'll laugh at me but she won't judge me and i think that lack of judgment is essential when it comes to our friendship so yeah if i were to compare our friendship to anything probably audrey lord pat parker i guess without further ado let's hop into the last interview this interview i actually didn't really know how to feel about it 
because it's relatively new. I'm slowly growing out of the insecurity I'd have with like new relationships because I think as an adult, you're forced to become comfortable in the uncomfortable. And in high school, it was hard for me to call someone a friend a lot of the time just because like, I don't even know if I didn't feel like we've seen each other enough or experienced enough. A lot of that takes time. But with this person, it was actually really easy for me to call um, her a friend. Those reasons will probably become relevant once you see the interview. So let's just go ahead and hop into the interview. Yeah. Normal until the bird had a nose. Alrighty, hello. This is Claudia. Hi. And we are coming at you from probably a grad student Steinhardt building. We just randomly stumbled upon here. It's very interesting in here. So yeah, for one. How did we meet? We met studying abroad in Paris. Where exactly did when? That's okay. I I think I it was in the common area. I remember, on like the fourth or seventh floor or something. Yeah. Right. And I think that we were like surrounded by other people, but then something mm -hmm. that. I think you or I said sparked like, yeah. oh, you like to read, I like to read. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that's then it, exactly what happened. And then that's basically like it all. I happened think we were from talking there. about like something in publishing, and I was like, bro, yeah, like about this book or what. I don't even remember exactly yeah. what the book was, but I was like, oh, shoot with the shits. Yeah, I, I might edit that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we stayed abroad in Paris this past spring. So we've known each other. Like, when did we meet? We didn't see each other at all the first month. So probably like February, March. -ish. February or March, basically. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's been nine nine months. Yeah. Damn. It's been nine basically, months. Basically <laughs> the whole year. The whole year. When pretty you think much. about it, basically. The yeah. Whole year. Exactly. Yeah. So this is my most recent friendship. Pretty much. Yeah. Would you say that our cultural, political, social views align, and why? I would say they do. I think that we've had these conversations. We even, Because <laughs> even just bringing things up casually and then yeah. being like, oh, wait, this is actually something that we can talk about and actually, like, align on. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we've really, like, had a conversation where there's been disagreement or any kind yeah. of thing where we're just like... It's true. Yeah. I think it's also, like, we have never, like, had in-depth conversations necessarily about politics, like, purposely, but, like, yeah. because we like similar stories... And because we come from, like, both of our parents are, like, I bet like, not white American, mm -hmm. that maybe something about that just caused them to happen to align, despite, like, not being on purpose. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. That's actually random how that happened, because we yeah. bonded over books, not necessarily, like, politics. Exactly. I mean, we weren't born in the same place, either. Want to say where you're from? I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she is. And I'm from D.C., bro. <laughs> I think, like, something that really brought up the fact that we probably think similarly is the fact that we agreed on, like, our thoughts on Barbie. Which, oh, despite true. despite not being, like, a political film, as some people might make it out to be, like, I think it does, like, show, like, your beliefs on, like, say, feminism and, like, social, like, interaction. And, yeah. like, we pretty much agreed on, like, the analysis of the film. But just saying that people were too harsh on it. Mm -hmm. And that, like, I think it was the film that it wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they actually do align pretty well. Like we don't need Greta Gerwig to like you know champion the intersectional right. feminism movement. Exactly, it's not necessarily like her story to tell either way. Exactly, but one movie or like one story doesn't have to be the full voice for an entire community exactly. or a movement of people, and that's ridiculous to yeah. expect from a film, especially a film that's like not supposed to take itself too seriously while tackling some serious themes. Yeah. Yes. I Anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you define our friendship? Would you say it is a sisterhood, collaboration, some other term? I could go first and like let you yeah. think. Because we haven't known each other as long, I wouldn't say as far as like sisterhood yet because we haven't even known each other a full year. I would say it is a bit more of a collaboration because you're one of the few friendships I have that I feel like we relate in an artistic sense. Mm -hmm. And like we talk about that more in depth than like any of my other friendships. In terms of, I would say you're a very accomplished young woman. <laughs> you have done a lot. <laughs> Like you've done a lot <laughs> and i like admire you in that sense so even if it's not costly like ah oh, bro like you hear about that job poster like you hear about this political thing like i think i take a lot of things from our conversations and think about it more deeply on my own time therefore like i would call it kind of mental collaboration even yeah. if it's like not fully on purpose themes on like books like thoughts on publishing like thoughts on just like the storytelling industry in general like mm -hmm. i think our conversations provoke more of those different kinds of thoughts in my head than like any other friendship i have so yeah I think I would agree. Like, the reason yeah. why I was so drawn to you at first was because I thought you were so creative and there was, like, yeah. something... You know, like, when you meet someone and you know, that, like, what you see isn't what you get? Yeah. But, like, yeah. in the best way, I was like, I feel like Lauren has, like, a lot of things, <laughs> like, a lot of interests that, that I would align with. Yeah. Like, even beyond, like, books, because obviously, like, we like similar movies or, mm -hmm. like, we, we bond on that as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that 
a way that I also define like how I think about you and our conversations is that I stumble upon something and I'm like, oh, I would love to see this with Lauren or like, Literally. I'd love to like, I, I think Lauren would like this. <laughs> so I think that I also do that as well of like, yeah, exactly. Um, just seeing things that we would both like and being like, we that actually leads, that leads to my next question. How do I show my friendship towards you? I think that it's just kind of being like, hey, let's see each other. Like, yeah. what are you doing this week? And mm-hmm. I remember in the beginning of the semester when I was really busy with my internship. Ooh, yeah. But like even just like the, the effort of just saying, hey, like if you're free, let me know. Mm-hmm. And then like the reciprocation of that, I think is like it might be, you know, not that like important to some people. But it's always yeah. nice because you know that the person is thinking it's of thinking you and vice versa. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I would Even when that. it's hard sometimes, because before break, bro, we was in the trenches. With the- we were, we were <laughs> in the trenches. Yeah. Clip, like, you want to link up? And I was like, girl, I'm in the trenches, bro. But I, w- I would say the same. Like, in terms of, like, showing our friendship towards each other, like, for example, like, the Japan Cinefest thing, mm-hmm. that my son was like, there are free tickets. And I was like, bro, I know exactly who I'm going to invite yeah. to this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, bro, free tickets. I know. <laughs> Like, this is a cinephile right here, yeah. bro. Like, she is so into that. So I was like, all right, we're going to go to that. Or, like, even, like, we went to brunch and we're like, you know what would be fun? Go into the Strand. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we, like, bookstore, bro. Like, the strand. Like, we were... The funny thing about bookstores, I would say, is that people are so fucking friendly when you're talking about books in a bookstore. They'll be like, bro, I read that book. I don't... I feel like I would like yeah. it. And then they go into death and tell you, like, plot points. Like, I feel like book spaces are, like, my happy place. And, like, you're one of the people that, like, actually fit into yeah. that place. And my I friends will that, come. Yeah. My other friends will come with me. But, like, no one's going to, like, get it the same way that, like, you, for example, yeah. would get it. Yeah. No, because we, we're, like, really avid readers. But we also really mm. care about... We're not just kind of, like, reading just for a little bit of pleasure. But we actually, yeah. like, really think about the stuff that... And, like, we, we do? No, and, like, we also, like, we're very much, like, entrenched in fandoms. And so we get really, yeah. like, involved in that. Mm-hmm. And I love that we were in that bookstore and everyone a bunch of people came up just to just like talk just to- <laughs> and just to like chit chat and i always find that really healing because i feel it like is. even in college i feel that we're not exposed to those spaces like people are very closed off they yeah. don't care about anything or they're not like interested in anything mm-hmm. so i think that that's also why i found you so refreshing is that you're very like overt with your interest and you're very yeah. much like i want i'm passionate about this stuff like let's talk about it like i it's love to true. talk about this stuff and i'm like yeah. i weirdly enough you don't see that much you don't see that it's that much. Weird. And it's like, this is coming from an English major, right? But like, as an English major, like, we read a lot of books, but we don't actually, like, properly, like, talk about it as an art form, I would say. Like, we talk about it largely in historical context. So there's nothing inherently wrong with that, because I do enjoy contextualization and everything like that. But, like, when you speed through text so quickly, like, you kind of lose the, you lose a lot of the heart of the text. And I guess, like, in just, like, the sense of just writing things over and over and over again and just connecting it to themes, you don't, like look at the text as itself and like what it means by itself yeah. and i think like that lack of meditation sometimes it's like soul sucking because a lot of times like people will be like oh yeah you read this book in class right i'm like yeah but like just because i read it in class i feel like i didn't get a full death of it like we read dracula in class i enjoyed the hell out of that book yeah. but can i like recall like immediately like certain like thoughts emotions like what i thought about the prose mm. and like the writing and like the artistry of it this conversation kind of culminates me and claudia's relationship we just tend to be very overly intellectualized philosophical people um to our benefit at least because that's part of the things that ties us together in seventh grade and then all of a sudden i like completely abandoned it and i just remember my mom like every single year she would always tell me like enroll in a photography class like at college like you have Mm. that at your disposal but i would always say that like i never wanted to do it on the collegiate level because i didn't want it to feel like work yeah and i not that i didn't want anyone to criticize my work in the sense i don't want criticism i just didn't want it to feel like you know i didn't want to put myself in that vulnerable position but also to Mm -hmm. like dislike photography or fall out of love with it because i felt that pressure to like produce something exactly and i feel like that's also the same with like art that people don't really want to do that in like the academic context is then you feel so much pressure to just kind of be academically good at it when it's not just a hobby or a pastime that you enjoy exactly and And i think I, th- I think one big thing I think with like studying the arts or like the humanities in school is that like sometimes like because it is a discipline you're taught to think a certain way that free thought I think is like really important when it comes to educating yourself which is why education is important in the classroom and outside the classroom yeah. right but I think sometimes like when you entirely try to like make something educationally you have to pay fucking like thousands of dollars in order to learn like sometimes like the best way of educating is outside the classroom and no shade to NYU <laughs>
No, and it's so ironic. Reasons. The most creative essay that people demand of you is your college admission essay, and then mm. after that, they they tell you how to write. It's like they tell you how to write. Like yeah. they reward the creativity and like the breaking boundaries of the essay that you write to get into college because it's yeah. so competitive. But then when you get into academia, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, oh, we glad we're glad that you did that, but maybe put that aside and <laughs> like aside. give me a thesis statement. Yeah. This is the kind of conversations we have, by the way. This is a case study. Right now. No, true. We didn't it's even. I did not mean for this to go in this direction, it but went very far. This is just like an anthropological study of just like no, sit yes. back and observe, I guess. We we done the interview though. I think this last question. You got any final comments, thoughts, <laughs> etc. I don't know. Friendship is magic. <laughs> <laughs>Okay, this interview was really interesting and also really mentally stimulating, which is to be expected because that's the kind of person that Claudia is and the kind of conversations that we tend to have. A really nice conversation. You probably noticed like the slight differences in the way that I interacted with all of my subjects. Um, (laughs) My subjects. My friends. The way I interact with Claudia I found is really interesting because... I'm still getting used to her and her like sense of humor and the way that she speaks and the way that we communicate. We have we share a language of art, but it's those slight nuanced things that we won't really get to know except for with the passage of time. So I'm very much looking forward to those kind of things. But yeah, we have a different friendship because yeah, it's one of the few friendships I've had that are long lasting in which they are connected through art. Um, and obviously I started in Paris and if I were to compare a relationship, it'll probably again be similar to Audrey Lord and Pat Parker and probably James Baldwin and Lorraine Hansberry and also probably like Langston Hughes and Zora Neale Hurston. All of these people, something that they have in common obviously is the fact that they are working in collaboration or living in collaboration essentially. Like they're cognizant of what the other person is doing. Um, They take the conversations they've had with that other person into account within their own work, whether they agree or disagree. And artistically, like they are bound together. And I feel like that's how me and Claudia came to be bound together. It's just one of the few relationships I've had that I like that, which is what makes a relationship really unique because not only do we share similarities in our artistic taste and like our artistic backgrounds, I would say, but also we share a lot of similar thoughts. We can laugh together. (laughs) <laughs> like could do random shit together i know if there's like some weird eccentric art thing going on in the city like i know exactly who i can reach out to in terms of that and i'm really grateful for having that kind of friendship because i don't know i would like to make more friendships like that in the future as someone who's a creative as someone who wants to work in the creative storytelling field i don't even know i really value claudia because it makes me feel not as alone in my aspirations and again she's a really accomplished person so i look up to her a little bit so in some um uh, what is the conclusion of this i guess like what i found really interesting is that like a lot of what binds my friendships together i think is shared experience and while a lot of my friendships in college especially are not the longest um i think it's like my willingness to be open and that honestly developed as a result of covid which is unfortunate but it made me realize that life is short and only so many things matter so there's no point really putting up a facade about who you are or like the kind of person that you want to be and therefore i've been really lucky and fortunate in the fact that like most of my friendships like most of my friendships all of my friendships really are pretty authentic um i know like some people struggle with within um this period because we do have we're going through a mental health crisis and also like people are kind of like the lack of socialization within our generation people are concerned about and i don't know there's just a lot (laughs) that people are concerned about in terms of like relationship development and i even know like we're living in like a lonely epidemic or something like that there's a lot going on but i think something to keep cognizant especially as i move forward in this next phase of my life because all of my relationships are probably going to change a little bit i don't know where i'm going to live within the next couple years i don't know where my friends are going to live within the next couple years i don't really know what the future brings and it's something to keep in mind moving forward that A lot of relationships take time. They also take care. They're like plants. You got to water them. You have to make an effort in order to see them or to communicate with them. And you shouldn't feel self-conscious in doing so because that's the only way a relationship forms. And starting off college, I was pretty lonely, yo. Like, obviously I had Stella, at least in the beginning because we're high school friends, but we don't go to the same school. And 2020 was the year where we had to start school, but the pandemic wasn't necessarily over. So like a lot of common places were not available anymore. I didn't really see that many people in person outside of class. And I honestly didn't really have friends until like the end of that school year. And even then, because I'd only know them for a few months, I didn't feel comfortable reaching out to them um, to a larger extent. So I don't know friendship it's difficult it's fickle it's weird but i think at least this project i've learned like 
the manners in which friendship can develop and i think a large part of that is communication watering that plant and also being open to being your true and authentic self i think that's the only way you can attract um, like-minded people towards you and also thinking seriously about the kind of people you want to surround yourself with i can sincerely say that everyone within this video and everyone even like not in this video i surround myself with them purposely because i admire some trait within them and that trait usually has something to do with like how they are on the inside as opposed to like external things that don't actually matter or don't actually make you feel good i don't even know like obviously i've had some friendship breakups i actually had my first friendship breakup in college but i think that's just because of like lack of being your authentic self that caused that friendship breakup so as long as i continue doing what i do as long as i continue to be willing to be vulnerable um and willing to be open and willing to go to different spaces and talk to different people and yeah just like step outside my comfort zone i should be fine also i'm kind of i'm the kind of person that kind of enjoys my own company a little bit so like while i do treasure a lot of these friendships um they're not the only thing that's going and therefore i think because like me and my friends bring different worlds to each other and we can talk about different things and yeah i don't even know this makes it all worthwhile so do i have a full-on conclusion no but i think after doing these interviews i have a better idea of how it is that i will develop relationships in the future and how it is that i want to maintain relationships that i have now as i move towards graduation because now it's the end of my fall semester and soon i will be a college graduate so that's really freaking dope i don't know thank you guys for watching yeah thank you so much Bye bye